Renee, and Scotty. Learn evolution science. Hi everyone! Today we'll be learning about evolution and how animals survive in our changing world. What's evolution? What does that have to do with animals like me? Well, Scotty, evolution is the process of how organisms change their features over time from generation to generation to survive better in where they live. Like, your great-great-great-great-grandparents may look a lot different than how you look now just because they lived in a different time. Wow! That's so cool! Wait! What's an organism and what does that have to do with me and my great-great-great-great-grandparents? An organism is any living thing. That means you are an organism. And your great-great-great-great-grandparents were organisms. Really? Yeah. Can you think of other things that can be organisms? You can pause the video to think along with Scotty. Um, well, lions, you, and wolves. Can plants be organisms? Yes, plants are organisms. Even bacteria are organisms. Well, so how do organisms go through evolution? Well, Scotty, first we have a population of organisms of the same species that exists in an environment. Wait, hold on. Is population the same as species? What's an environment? To answer your first question, a population is not the same as a species. While a population describes a group of any animals who live in the same environment, a species is more specific. A species is the largest group of animals that are similar enough so that they can make babies with each other. So a species living in the same environment can be called a population, but not all populations are a species. To answer your second question, an environment is the surroundings or conditions in which organisms survive and thrive. Do animals in a species have to look all the same? No, Scotty. Organisms within a species do not have to look the same. They can look different and even have unique character traits from other organisms within the species. The only thing that matters is that they are similar enough that they are able to have babies with each other. Take dogs, for example. There are so many different breeds of dogs and they can all look so different. However, they all still belong to the same species no matter the breed. The condition that organisms within the same species have various traits that make them different from one another is called variation. What does variation have to do with evolution? Evolution assumes that within a population of organisms of the same species, there is variation. This variation means that these organisms have different sets of adaptations to help them survive in their environment. Adaptations are useful traits organisms have to help them survive in their environment. These traits include leg length and fur color. Can you think of other possible examples of adaptations? Think about the adaptations that you yourself, Scotty, or I use in our daily lives. Again, you could always pause the video to think with Scotty. What did you come up with, Scotty? I would say that my fur is an adaptation that keeps me warm, especially in the Pittsburgh winters. Your opposable thumbs are a useful adaptation I am jealous of. Finally, eyes! Eyes are a great adaptation that allows us to see things. Going back to talking about evolution, organisms with adaptations suited for their environment are better at surviving than organisms who don't have those adaptations. The organisms with adaptations use them to survive their environment while the organisms without adaptations don't survive. So, the organisms that survive with their adaptations live to pass on their useful adaptations to their children. The repetition of this whole process over time is what evolution is all about. Origins of Created Creatures In this activity, you get to build your own organism out of scrap materials and test them out in real-world environments. Let's get started! Yeah! Let's get a crack on creating! Materials. So what you're going to need is some scissors, adhesive such as tape or glue, 
markers and some recycled or miscellaneous stuff that you find around the house. I just picked stuff from my recycling bin as well as things that I found just lying around. An important thing to keep in mind is please check with the people around you that the items you are using to make your creature not being kept or used by anyone else. You don't want to upset anyone by changing up things that are personally theirs. So please ask for permission before you use anything for this activity. So in the process to create my recycle critter, I used this um, plastic fruit packaging, the plastic egg carton, and a piece of yarn and a piece of t-shirt that I found on my desk. So I took the egg carton, whoops, and I basically cut one of the egg holders from the egg carton. It was kind of hard to cut through, so I would advise everyone to be careful when you cut through plastic with just regular pair of scissors because the edges of the plastic can be kind of sharp. So we're going to fast forward through this part of me cutting out the egg holder because that's not really interesting. Just watching me struggle, so finally got it. Then I took the fruit packaging and I cut one of the cups from that. And it was generally a lot easier to cut because it was like a much lighter plastic, more thinner one. So I took the two things that I cut out and then I put the egg holder into the plastic packaging wrap and I twisted one of the ends so I just kind of covered it and twisted it over the plastic egg holder. I don't think it was obvious in the video but I put the plastic egg holder upside down within like the fruit packaging cup so I'm twisting the one of the ends of the fruit packaging cup so that it fits pretty nicely over the egg holder. So then I take a piece of the yarn and I wrap it around the end that I twisted a couple of times to make sure everything's all secure. Double knotting things, just kind of making sure that the twisted end is shaped to the way that I like it. So I noticed on the side that the plastic egg holder was kind of poking out with the sharp plastic, so I decided to cut it off and then patch up that hole with some tape. And then I continued wrapping the string around the end. And then I continued to wrap around some more yarn and then twist the end a little bit more, shaping it. And then I finished, so I cut the last bit off and voila! I made a recycled trash duck. So this is just an example of something you can make from items around your house. You don't have to do things exactly how I did. Like just let your creativity run wild and don't be afraid to make mistakes in trial and error because like that's how I ended up with these two ducks because I just decided to make a prototype first to know what I'm doing. Move on to Scotty. So Scotty found an old post-it lying around, so he decided to put his origami skills to use and create a paper crane as his recycled creature. Scotty is creating his recycled creature just from folding a piece of paper lots of times, so the possibilities are endless, and here's the final result. Now we're ready to test these trash birds out in the wild, so to speak.
Environment number one, the sink. I helped plug the sink so that we could make a fake lake. Then after I filled the sink with water, I threw in my bird, and I threw in mine, to see how well they survived in water. I noticed how my bird was doing fairly well in the water. It was just floating really well, even when I disturbed the water a bit. I noticed that my bird was doing okayish in the water, but not as well as Renee's bird. As it kept floating, it absorbed more and more water, so that it was sinking a bit. Then we tried adding a waterfall by turning on the faucet. Scotty's bird was completely soaked after this, and it was pretty much drowning in the force of the waterfall. Finally, the force of the waterfall got to my bird too, and then it just flipped over. My bird was soaking wet after all that. My bird was pretty waterproof. I guess it's because it was made mostly of plastic. Environment number two: the stairs. For this environment, we just dropped our birds down the stairs. I knocked my bird off first. Since I was holding on the railing for dear life, I let Renee knock down mine. While Scotty's fell onto its side, mine actually landed upright. To make sure it wasn't a fluke, we tried again. This time, Scotty's landed quite upright while mine tumbled on its side. I guess we know one thing for sure: how a birds were not built to fly. Environment number three: cat's nap spot. We wanted to test how our trash birds would interact with another organism, specifically a cat. Would the cat act as a predator to our birds? We found the cat to be very disinterested with our birds, so I guess the birds were adapted to coexist with an animal such as a cat. And we're back. That was a fun activity, wasn't it? You're sure right, Scotty. Before we wrap up, I just want to go over some reminders when you're testing your created creatures in different environments. First off, be creative. The places where Scotty and I tested our created creatures aren't the only places you could try. There are so many other options. For example, you could even go outside. Secondly, be safe. Don't do anything that could put you in harm's way. When in doubt, always ask an adult. Lastly, be responsible. Be aware of how your experiments or what you're doing affects others. For example, we made sure that we weren't harming the cat in any way when we decide to interact with it for our tests with our created creatures. With all this in mind, I guess it's safe to say that we could wrap things up now. We really did a lot with our time. Yeah, we learned a lot about evolution and created model organisms out of scrap material. Let's review what we learned from all these activities. What did you learn? You can pause the video to think. I learned that the types of adaptations you have tells you about which environments you could survive in. I also learned that populations and species are not the same. Oh, and evolution happens over long periods of time in response to changes in the environment. Wow, you sure learned a lot. Now let's review vocab. What new words did you learn? Again, you can always pause the video if you need more time to think. The new words I learned were evolution, adaptation, species, population, organism, variation, and environment. Great. Lastly, let's talk about our favorite parts. What was your favorite part? My favorite part was testing our great creatures in all those different. Environments. That's a good one, Scotty. My favorite part was learning evolution science with you all. Aw, I also liked that part. Well, sadly, our time together is up. Thank you so much for watching. We really enjoyed learning with you. Time to say goodbye, Scotty. Bye bye.